Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of my newest series, making ultimate tic-tac-toe in Minecraft without any command blocks. Now, I wanted to start by saying that I know what I'm doing isn't a new idea, but I didn't see anyone else both fully documenting the process and also making everything out of just redstone, so I decided to give it a shot myself. I'll begin by describing what ultimate tic-tac-toe even is. The board is just nine normal tic-tac-toe boards inside of one big tic-tac-toe board. The nine smaller boards are called local boards, and the one big board is called a global board. The game starts by having the first player choose any tile. Whatever tile they choose on that local board corresponds to the local board player 2 will have to play on next turn. For example, if player 1 chooses to go in this square, player 2 will have to play in the bottom left local board on their next turn. If player 1 goes here, then player 2 will have to play on the middle local board next turn. If a player wins a local board, as shown here, then that board turns into a win for them on the global board. To win the game, you must win the global board. Really, that's the very basics of the game. There are a few more rules, but I think that's enough explanation for now. What we need to worry about is how to even make the game in Minecraft. The first thing that I think will be important to do is making the display. It'll be useful for testing different aspects of the game. Let's look at what we'll need to make that. I started out by experimenting with a few different ideas for the display. This was my first attempt at making one. I was trying to make it compact, but I learned very quickly that I couldn't individually address every lamp. I even tried making a display that laid flat on the ground, but I even couldn't make that work, so I decided to scrap that whole idea. This was my second attempt. Now, this might look very similar to the first display, but actually it's a little different. Each cluster of three lamps was going to be a single pixel, not a board. What you're looking at is the bottom of a single local board. In fact, the complete display would have to be three times as big as what I started to construct here. This idea was on the chopping block once I realized the sheer size of what I was going to do. This one didn't work out either. This display was the one that I finally settled on. It's quite similar to the display in the background, except that instead of three lamps per pixel, I'm using just one. This display isn't a perfect solution, as it does have a lot of dead space in between the pixels, but it is reasonably sized and allows each light to be individually addressed on and off. If we swing over to the back, you can see how each of these gets addressed. Basically, a signal just needs to come in on the side here, and the corresponding digit will light up. Now this will work for a little display like this, but if we have all 729 lights in this thing connected like this, Driving it is going to be an absolute nightmare. Well, it's probably obvious by now that we can't control all 729 inputs manually. What we can do is create a state system. For example, if the computer says for space 1 to be in state 1, that might mean to show nothing. State 2 might mean to show an X. State 3 might mean to show an O. State 4 might mean to show a slash, which forms part of the picture for a big X on the global board. Finally, state 5 might mean to show the part of the picture for a big O on the global board. This method might seem like it's overcomplicating things, but what it allows us to do is kind of amazing. We can control all nine pixels using only five different input lines. Really though, we can do even better than that. We can use binary counting to encode our input lines to decrease how many we need even further. Here I'll show what I mean. I have three redstone lines in front of me. I'll keep a counter in the top right of the number of different states that we can experience with these. We'll start here with all the redstone lines off. If we turn on the right line, we have one state. Now if we turn off that line and turn on the middle line, we have another new state. And if we turn on both the middle and the right lines, now we have another state. And here we can turn on the right line and none of the other lines and have a fifth state. We can actually count all the way up to eight unique states using just these three lines. But what we've done is proven that we can encode five different states using only three redstone lines. The nine pixels of our segment can now be driven by only these three lines. We've knocked down the number of inputs from 729 to only 243. Okay, I'm getting tired of all this explanation, so I decided to load up a fresh world and build the display. I'll come back to the wiring in a little bit.
left the display front all right. Now I just need to add the circuitry to go behind it. After a lot of consideration, this was how I decided to structure the display inputs. To begin, here are the individual display inputs. These are what tell each square to be off, an X or an O. Each square has two inputs since it only takes two display lines to encode three unique states. This means we'll have two times 81 inputs here, or 162 inputs. Up here, what I'm gonna call global inputs. These correspond to each local board and can X or O an entire local board. If a global input is active, it blocks just the individual inputs for that local board and displays either a big X or O. These have two inputs per local board, since one line will say whether it's active or not, and the other will say whether to display an X or an O. This gives us a total of nine times two inputs, or 18 inputs here. In total, we'll have 162 plus 18 inputs, or 180 inputs to our display. This number is still massive, but I'd like to think it's at least manageable now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the experimentation with logic gates. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.